Hello everyone, welcome to this video about how to practice the stuff that you learn from my videos in such a way that it will stick and that you won't get too frustrated. Coming right up. Before we start a couple of things, the song I was playing at the beginning is called how Deep is the Ocean, uh, I will put the title on the screen. And I was playing it because I just uploaded a backing track for that song and there's a link to that backing track in the description. Really cool song to practice your uh, licks on. And below that is a link to a playlist with all my backing tracks. Also, if you like my videos, please like this video, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I mean, what's the harm? You'll get updated on my videos, learn a lot of new cool stuff, so, and you're helping my channel out. So like, subscribe, click the bell, bell icon next to the subscribe button to keep, uh, to get notified when I upload a new video. Um, okay, let's get started with the subject for today. Last week, I got a comment um, and I have gotten many such comments, like with the same message. A guy asking me uh, how to practice the phrases and licks that, that he learned from my videos so that he wouldn't forget them because he was practicing the phrases but then he couldn't recall them once he had to play for real maybe during a gig or a jam session he just couldn't make it happen during his solo and he was wondering if it was something that was wrong with his practice methods and I have a practice regimen for you in this video but before we do that I want to um, tell you two uh, important or two philosophies that might help you fight the frustration when you feel that this is happening to you, because this is happening to everyone, including me. I still remember talking about this with a um, Finnish guitar player, Oli Soikili, and he told me, he said to me, well, 90% or 80% of, of my what I practice is wasted. It was a kind of a joke, but it's the same thing, right? You're practicing all this new stuff, this new licks, this new concepts, and then when uh, you really have to perform, Maybe in a jam session or a gig, you're not playing any of it. And even though you want to, right? So, two things. First thing is that um, you shouldn't care about the results. Only care about the work. Which means that if you've practiced for two hours and you're practicing this one little lick and you were feeling like you were able to play it, right? During the practice session, but then during the, the evening jam, you were not able to play it once or the one time that you almost played it, it failed, you made a mistake or the time wasn't right, then you shouldn't feel bad about it. I mean, not too bad, right? Because you shouldn't care about the result. That was the result, right? The result was that you were not able to play it. You should care about the work you did. You worked for two hours and you uh, didn't work only on that leg. Maybe it feels like that, but you were also just working on your timing and your technique and a lot of things happened during that two hours that really did improve your playing. And even though that lick didn't really work that time, it might work in the, in the future, who cares? Who care about the work. That's the first thing. The second thing is that the way I look at it is, look at it is that I pretend, or the metaphor is I have a darts board, right? Uh, to, to throw darts. And I'm just throwing 60 darts at the same time. I'm aiming for the bullseye, but maybe one will hit the bullseye 
And that is the dart I'm pointing at during performance. Right? That's the dart that people are looking at and think, oh, wow, it, that really hit bullseye, right? You're, you, that, that, that looks good or that sounds good, right? So the thing is I'm practicing maybe 60 licks in a half year and maybe one or two will stick. But those licks, those darts are, are, are the ones that I'm playing all the time that I'm, I'm able to vary them, to connect them to my uh, vocabulary I had before. So even though 59 or 58 of those darts or those licks seem to be wasted, um, I probably wouldn't have discovered those two phrases that I'm really fond of if I wouldn't have practiced all of them. And then again, I'm also thinking about care about the work. So even though I worked, uh, I didn't manage to play those other 58, I did work a lot on guitar playing in general by practicing them. Okay, that said, let's go to a practice regimen I use myself and uh, which I wrote down now for you in a slide. Oh, sorry, that's the tab for later. Um, here it is, the slide. And um, there's a couple of things in that slide that are very important to discuss, but I'm not gonna discuss all of them. Actually, everything is important in the slide to discuss. But the, the two white lines, the two top lines, I'm not gonna talk about in this video, right? Technique, 15, 15 minutes of practice, and new material timing. That is, that is very important. That's to get the new material that you're practicing for that day or for that week in your fingers in such a way that you are actually able to play it. And I'm gonna make a separate video for that, uh, which is only for my uh, patrons on Patreon, and I'll make that next week or maybe the weekend. So if you want to have access to that um, video, then you can join my Patreon link in the description. I'm gonna talk about the yellow and the green letters. So NM, new material, which I already practiced in, in, the, in the first two steps. I'm going to play that isolated with a backing track for four forms. So I have some new material, which I have never practiced before. Uh, I did do the, I did figure out how to play them, right? So there's their step and I practiced the timing, but I didn't ever play it in a playing situation. So this is gonna be the first time. So this lick sounds like this. One, two, three, four, one. <laughs> Two, three, four, one. It's just a two, five, one lick in D. Three, four, mm. I don't know who it is. It sounds like something Peter Bernstein could play. But this comes from my repository of phrases that I wrote down but I, I didn't practice yet, which are hundreds of phrases. Um, so, um, the first thing I'm going to do is, I'm going to do it isolated with a backing track. And isolated means that I'm only going to play this phrase, I'm not going to play anything else. So even though the backing track is running, I'm going to only play this. So it's in D, so I'm going to take my backing track for um, Coquette, which is on my channel. I'm going to play it in the first A on the 251 in D in the second A, and then the bridge I'm gonna play it on the 251 in G. So I have to play it in G, which would be here. Right, because I see it as, okay, it starts in D, it starts in the third position of E minor. That comes from our fretboard system. If you don't know any, if you don't know what I mean, check out my fretboard system, Van Heemert system in the, in the description. So in G, I have to play it on the third position of A minor, which is here, so. D again. So I'm gonna play it first A, second A, bridge, and third A. And um, I'm not gonna play anything else, only that. And I would do it for four forms, so four, but I'm gonna do it once, right, to save time. Here we go. E 
mano a mano. Eso es. Bridge. I can play it here too. And I would do it for four forms, right? Um, so in the bridge, I was playing it on the A7 two bars too, because that two bars A7, you could also think of it as E minor 7, A7. And if I need more than four forms, because I doesn't feel like I, I own the phrase, then I'm gonna do more forms. So then I would do uh, four more, but now I would be more free with the phrase. So that usually means I'm gonna shift it in time. So probably play it two beats too early, so that I would resolve to D too early, but that's a good sound, or two beats too late, so that I would resolve to D too late, but that's also a cool sound. So let me do one form where I play, I know the first two A's, I'm gonna play too early. So I'll start on the three end in the bar before, and then the bridge I will play too late. So I'm gonna start on the three end in the first bar instead of the one end. So start too early. So in the fourth bar, two. Ah, that's not good. One more time, here we go. In the fourth bar, one, two, three, one, two. Mm. I'm gonna be too late. One, two. Again, too late. Here we go. One, two. Mm. Let's do too early. One, two. And if I do four forms, maybe the first two forms I'm gonna be too too early, then two forms too late. Maybe do four more forms where I, where I switch between too late and too early. Then I would do again the four forms, but now I would be more free with the phrase. I would start early late, but then I would also maybe not play everything of the, of the lick, maybe only the first part or the second part or change the rhythm. So let me try that. And this doesn't have to sound good all the time, right? I'm just experimenting with the phrase to see if I can make it more if I can be more free with it, so that it becomes something that I can vary. Not all phrases are suitable to be very free. I think this phrase, it is not the easiest to be free with it, but I mean, you see how it works, right? You just experiment with it and you do all of these repeti repetitions to keep it interesting for yourself. But the only thing you're actually doing is re repeating that phrase, repeating that phrase. Now we get to the second yellow point, NM, new material with connections. So now I'm going to improvise. That's what you normally see in my videos. I'm improvising and I'm gonna insert this phrase uh, at the same uh, points I was doing so far, but now I'm gonna improvise. And I'm gonna try to keep the improvis improvisation as simple as possible in the beginning to give myself time to think about when to play this phrase. And I wanna try to find a connection. So because sometimes you, maybe you end up with your hand here and you have to jump for this phrase, but sometimes it's nice to find a connection. Sometimes it helps to think about how you could connect it. For instance, the bar before I have A7, so maybe, I could play something like uh, yeah, 
Yeah, that's what we want. Or I could play some B7 before maybe. No, maybe you could play some E minor. That would work. Maybe that would work. Something like that. I would figure it out. Or I would just see what happens. So let me improvise, improvise two courses. The first course, I'm going to play really simple, basic stuff. And the second, I'm going to do make it more flowing, more like I, it would be in a real life situation. First course, first course is going to be incredibly simple. Something like that, and also uh, one time I was actually playing something before that connected directly to the, to the phrase. That is really a nice idea, and it doesn't have to be very complicated. It could just be some chromatic things, right? Something to make the phrase longer or shorter or longer in this in this case. So I would do that for as long as I felt inspired to do it, which could be a long time. Could be could be an hour, right? Then um, maybe I would do it with two. Uh, maybe I have like uh, I have some chord ideas too, right? There are some chord ideas on the sheet, but I don't want to spend too long, too much time. Just let's just stick with this phrase. And um, I would then go to the green letters, and that is very important. This is where I think many of you would actually not follow my advice because you feel it's too much hassle. But this is really one of the most important things. And that is the first point. Record, listen critically, and make notes. So what you're going to do is you're going to put your phone there, uh, preferably with video. So buy a little stand with a, a mobile phone clip and record yourself with a backing track um, playing a solo where you play this phrase as many times as possible. Maybe you do like four choruses and you try all kinds of stuff, right? You try to play a complicated solo with this line, uh, maybe play something with simple and play this line or vary the line as much as possible, right? Just play a solo that you feel like you could play during a gig. And then you're gonna listen and watch yourself play the solo and you're gonna make notes and you're gonna be very critical, right? So you're gonna uh, not only look at the line, but look at everything. Like I say, well, my I'm rushing or I'm missing too many notes and be very detailed. Like, especially about the new phrase, right? It's like, okay, that new phrase, let's say, let's say I make notes, and I've noticed that this slide, I'm always rushing the slide, I'm playing it like this. So I'm gonna make notes like you're rushing the slides, right? And then next thing I notice that, that this B is always muffled because I have to play it with the same finger. Something like that, right? So, and then I notice that after the B flat, my rest is too short, so this first this note, this G sharp is too early, like this. 
right? I make all these notes and I can make notes about other stuff too. Like, okay, when uh, I'm trying to connect phrases, there's always a big jump, something like that. Be very critical. And then you're gonna work on those details. So you're gonna listen to yourself play for at least four to 10 times to make all these notes. And what, what is happening when you do this is you, you're gonna hear this line all the time, right? You, you're playing it yourself, but you're gonna hear it back. And you start to notice details in the line that you were not noticing when you were playing it. Now you're gonna work on the details. Without the backtrack, you're gonna say, okay, I need to clean up the timing on, on those slides. So you're gonna take a metronome and you're gonna do basically do the second white point, the new material timing thing, which I'm gonna talk about in the Patreon video, but you're gonna work on the timing with the metronome very precisely. You're gonna work on technical details to clean up the line. And then you're gonna go back to the yellow, right? Uh, uh, part isolated and with connections. And you can make, you can repeat this cycle as many times as you want, right? So that depends on how long you practice, right? I practice for many hours a day, four or five hours, so I can make this cycle a couple of times. Maybe you can only do it once and you do it, in, do it again the next day. But if you follow this method, you have the biggest chance of this lick, of the new material sticking. And if it doesn't stick, then go back to the green. Listen to the line, because remembering the line is not only about playing it, but it's only about being able to hear it. And the best way to train to hear it is to hear yourself play it over and over again. Because that's what happens when I record myself, right? I listen to it many times and I notice the bad things, but I also notice the good things. Like, well, that sounds really good. I should remember, I should do that more, right? And listening to yourself like that and getting the, that stuff in your ears will help you actually play it during a live performance. So that is my practice regimen. And then you do this every day. And I don't know how long you want to stick with a certain new material. I will always say stick with it as long as it interests you. If, if it starts to bore you, get some new material. Forget about what you did with the, with the previous. And maybe it will sneak into your playing. Maybe it won't. Again, only care about the result. That is basically um, my practice regimen, the Van Hamert system practice regimen. Now, I prepared a lot of phrases actually for this lesson, but uh, it takes too much time. So what I'm going to do is, let me show you. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to make the video on Patreon. So I have, I have a lot of phrases and like lots of cool chords. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to make a video on Patreon uh, for the technique and new material. And then I'm going to make another video for my highest level uh, patrons the level, uh, the $10 and up. And I'm gonna talk about all the phrases on this uh, PDF that were not discussed in this video or the technique uh, video, the, the video about the white letters. That was it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know how it works out for you. And I will see many of you in the next video, which will be a George Benson related video again, or hopefully I will see you on Patreon. We talk about technique and timing and maybe i will even see you in the highest level pat patreon video where we're going to talk about the phrases i didn't discuss bye